Hi, this is Sarah Francis, and we're over at the Goggle Works right now, and we're going to uh, talk with Sarah about some of her artworks. You know, Sarah's a conceptual artist and uh, a performance artist, and some of the work that she does is, uh, a lot of the work that she does is, in fact, is uh, being uh, published on her blog site, which is Sarah Francis01 at uh, .blogspot.com. Okay, and um, Sarah, tell, tell us about your artwork, would you please? Sure. Um, right now I'm working on a couple different projects, but one of the things that I'm working on is a project called Choose My Underwear, where I um, set up a, a social networking site where I'm allowing uh, people to make a, a choice about my undergarments for me, and they're invited to go out and purchase a pair of underwear or something that you'd wear under your clothes, send it to, into the project, and then I wear it, photograph it, and put it up on to the social networking site. And that's Facebook primarily. Facebook, yeah. yeah. Um, and this project is functioning in a lot of different ways for me. Um, one thing that it's doing is allowing me to challenge the idea of a self-portrait um, and sort of be able to have control over my image, but also give up a certain amount of control over my image because I'm inviting people to shape my image through their own sort of object, which is the underwear. The underwear functions as a, an object as well as an idea um, because underwear has a lot of different connotations and it can function in people's lives in a number of different ways. Mm -hmm. So I'm allowing people to choose what way that is and I will become a reflection of their perception in that way. Okay. And, and, and so you're, uh, what you're doing is you're making a comment about how people tend to look at other, other people according to the garments that they wear or the identities that they choose to wear because of the garments that they wear? I am. I'm making a comment on that as well as how people perceive a certain image, um, which is people make a certain decision about how they want to be perceived and mm -hmm. they do that they sort of create their own construct through Facebook which is how I'm presenting this project um, people are able to live out that sort of construct they're able to put out whatever pictures that they want of their personality they can post certain pictures of how they want to be perceived um, through their profile pictures so it's like now more than ever people are sort of living through their image and I question that and sort of see it as, as a dangerous thing um, today because we're losing touch, I think, with our, our authentic self. And I, my greater sort of mission in my work right now is to question and search for that authenticity or to see if it really exists. And sort of the situations or the scenarios that I set up for my work make fun of the fact that we have these constructs and that we accept them and live through them. Mm -hmm. You have um, a lot of humor in your work. A lot right. of, you know, sometimes it's it's like you wonder why you would do something like this because it, it, it does have a certain aura, maybe, um, I, don't, I don't know, maybe ridiculousness or sort of like outlandishness that, that uh, like, why even do something like that? But, you know, there's, you know, almost a, a sort of a comical under, undertone of, um, of symbolic uh, referentiality to it. Yeah, humor uh, functions in a couple different ways in my work, and one of the main functions that it has is it exposes the construct um, through the humor of it. Yeah. So I go about these activities, um, like in this piece called Sink Bath, or in Chocolate Dishes, where I approach a certain task and then there's sort of like a, a shift partially through the activity where it becomes something else, and that something else that it becomes is a way for me to expose sort of a, a way of thinking um, that I see as sort of silly or um, a way to reflect back to the viewer that they might have thought mm -hmm. of this at one point or maybe this is the way that they see certain things. Now in, in sink bath you're actually you're, you're actually climbing into a kitchen sink along with dishes and other and, and other utensils and giving yourself a bath right there in this in, in the sink. That's um, correct. You know that's a, a, and you photograph and document all of this mm -hmm. in, in the process of doing that. 
Did you actually have a photographer, or did you just find your photographer? Uh, no, it, it's a video piece, and um, I do all of my own photographing or documenting of the performative pieces. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I set up, I make all of the sort of, what's the word I'm looking for, formal decisions about how the work is documented and how then it's presented. Mm -hmm. So you do all, all, all the artistic direction and everything? Yes. So you have done a number of different videos, and some of some of them are posted on the website or the the blog posts, mm -hmm. as as I've noticed. Yes. Uh, you, you had one where you where you you place your your head in uh, in a stream that I noticed, and that was uh, and you just keep it there. Is that? Yeah, um, that that came from a sort of series that I, that I did called um, Spaces in Between, where I try to and, and another series that I did. Um, where I argue with inanimate objects, those situations are a way for me to try to access like internal content as well as accessing information from my own body that I never had before. Um, because once you sort of gain information mm -hmm. um, through these performative pieces, you know, that's something that you have then for the rest of um, your work and for the rest of your experience. So those activities are a way for me to like get some raw content or to maybe discover something about myself uh, that I hadn't known before. Are these pre-planned uh, videos I mean, or, or is this something impromptu that you just created while you were on the spot? Um, they're planned um, and, and they're not planned. The, the first piece that I did that was like this was called Bucket of Truth and it was during a time where I was really unsure about what what my work was about and what was tying it all together. And I made a joke about, well, maybe I should just drown myself. And then I thought, well, wouldn't that be interesting if I tried it? Not really to drown myself. I wasn't, you know, trying to go there. But I, I put my head in a bucket of water and held it there until I couldn't anymore. And after doing this about five or six times, I realized that right before I had to pull my head out of the water, um, I could hear my heartbeat. And I thought, that's what it's about. Like, that's what I, I found what it's about. It's about this experience, my experience, how I see the world, and my own humanity in the larger context of my environment and mm -hmm. how I am influenced by certain things, but when you, when you come down to it, it's still your own heartbeat. And I thought that that was really powerful, and I would have never sort of pulled that content out if I hadn't done that activity. So. That's why I, I choose to do things like that. To do things like that, but you, you're you're not actually putting yourself in any kind of danger. I mean, because yeah. there's I mean, those like certain things too, like people practice auto or auto erotica, uh, suffocation, things of that nature, where they they uh, they do something really uh, drastic to themselves so that they have this intense experience right before they would possibly die. But they don't allow themselves to die. They they give themselves a way out. Yeah, there's no connection to my work in that phenomenon. Yeah. yeah. So, but they say, oh, you, what is that? The closer you get to death, the more you appreciate life? Yeah, I wouldn't say that that's really what I'm searching for. Or that my work has a connection to putting myself in harm's way in any or way. Nothing like that. Okay. Um, now, you did one of the videos that I, that I um, would like to remark on is how you make a number of different changes. Where you, I think it's called Many Me. And yes. where you do you do a number of clothing changes within two and a half minutes, uh, and you do it all in fast fast motion, and uh, you, you you have a number of different guises that you put on. But uh, what's the what's the purpose of change of having uh, one clothing change after another? Uh, well, the, all of the sort of quote unquote costumes that I'm changing into are actually from my own home, and those are all things that I those are all sort of clothing that I put on to execute a certain act. And um, you can, the viewer is able to, you know, make any connection that they want to what the clothing actually means um, and what act I would be performing. But um, that was a way for me to sort of visually remind myself of all the different roles that I play and then question what that means um, to the sort of construction of my own self. Um, so, sort of, so that activity was a way for me to sort of flesh out all of these different ideas and all of these different roles that I play 
through the day or the month or the week um, mm -hmm. and give it a visual sense. It was like a sketch. Like a sketch, right. Well, it, it happens very, very quickly. But it's, fa it's fascinating the way you do it because there's no, back there's no background, there's no uh, dis disturbing uh, outside influences, and it's just, as you're just boom, 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 just doing it. And it's, and it's interesting. Now, you also say that woman is an illusion. So what do you mean by that? Well, I think that femininity is all about maintaining. Um, maintaining that certain aspect. Uh, um, there's a lot of myths about femininity and, and what it is to be a woman. Um, like the feminine enigma or the, the women's sense or the, the women's ways or women's work. And these I see as myths and sort of femininity is an illusion. And there's a really good example of that. Um, Jenna, um, I don't remember the last name right now, but uh, she, he was a transsexual who entered into the um, beauty pageant that was oh, being yeah, run by yeah, Donald I Trump and, yeah. and um, mm -hmm. beautiful woman yeah. who also happened to be a man. Mm -hmm. And um, that, that's a perfect example of how, like the constructs that, and I'm not necessarily just saying femininity is a construct. I'm not gonna go down that road, but there are ways that we maintain these ideas of ourselves. And a lot of it I see as of an illusion. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it, it, it's like uh, presenting a woman as having a certain role uh, in society. Right, so it's not just visual, yeah. but it's also like psychological. Right, right. Well, I mean, it happens on the male side too, but you know, we all, we all choose uh, certain constructs as to how we behave uh, in, in the society. Now with one of the, uh, like some of the photos that you have on your blog also have, uh, have you going food shopping and you have a ball gag on. It, it can reference that, but for me, it, it references um, two activities that are traditionally um, seen as maybe feminine. And one of them is food shopping, and the other one is highly sexualized, submissive bondage. And I really wanted to juxtapose those two things together. The taboo aspect that we don't normally talk about, and the thing that's sort of expected or that is just assumed. It's like a mixing an assumption with something that nobody really would ever want anybody else to know unless they were very close or intimate mm -hmm. with that person in some way. Um, and that's what that piece is really about. Well that kind of, that kind of ties into some of the uh, choose my underwear concepts in a way because you have a uh, uh, say for instance the idea of maybe the Victoria's Secret that a woman would be wearing um, underneath the clothing that she has is, is talking about some kind of uh, maybe s smoldering undercurrent of, uh, of, of sexual prowess that a woman may have uh, that is only uh, visible to like certain people. Um, but this is a little bit more outspoken, a little bit more out in the open, but it is it referencing is. the same thing. And another thing that I sort of am poking fun at uh, through Choose My Underwear and through You Are What You Eat is this idea of, of the consumable image of femininity is as long as that consumable image stays within the, the accepted outlets like television, media, um, obviously pornography, as long as that stays there, it's okay. But once she, the consumable image, like steps out into actual public, what, what does that do to, to the people who experience that? It kind of like is confounding and it's not really welcome because it's not, she needs to stay where she's allowed. <laughs> so I, I'm trying to take yeah. her and throw her out there where maybe she's not so much allowed and, and see how society or how the viewer responds to it or can react to it. It's are not you, gonna be the same thing. Are you suggesting that, that, uh, that women are controlled in society? Is I'm that? suggesting that the image of women are, is controlled and that the, the image that's out there um, and more frequently out there now is really damaging and um, it's it's really funny in a way because if we were to project ourselves this way or if a woman sees this image and starts to, to project herself that way in reality she's looked down upon however this image is consumed that's like such a 
fast rate and like society is hungry for more, but it has to stay within mm -hmm. sort of like a distance. Right. Because once once these things sort of get out about an individual, it sort of can tarnish their uh, right. the reputation. Reputation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's um, I mean, what with the political climate right now and everything that's being done about not being able to say the word vagina, mm -hmm. you know, in, in, in public or, uh, uh, you know, the, the aspects that certain political parties are looking to control reproductive rights and, and that, I mean, that's really, um, you know, that's all, part of, that's all part of this. So, I mean, it's all bringing a woman to self-awareness and saying, hey, you, you, you know, like the way, I, the way I see it, women are autonomous voting people. And they, you know, and they deserve all of the all of the rights that any human being deserves. And I don't uh, know. Maybe I'm speaking out of turn, but if that's one of the things that you're aiming at, maybe. Oh, I agree, I agree with that completely. Um, I wouldn't say that necessarily my work is exploring uh, feminism. I would say that it's sort of because I can't speak for other women. I'm just sort of talking about. But you're only speaking for yourself. Right. My right. experience, and right. um, I'm not sure if everybody does share my experience. Right. It's uh, it, it's also that it's taken place in the form of performance art. That is really interesting as well too, because you're performing this, and you're not just performing it live. I mean, because I, I haven't, you haven't, like posted on any, like live venues, which would actually be very cool. Maybe a place like here, like the Goggle Works, uh, would be open to. Uh, to, to something like that, you know, to, you know, for uh, adult audiences, of course, but the, um, but that is taking place on Facebook and on the internet is uh, ex exploring new media. It is. Yeah. It's a, it really is. It seems like people almost feel like they're having more of a real experience now when there is some kind of technology involved. Right. Right. Because you can, you know, I mean, everybody's walking around with an iPad an iPhone, a, you know, a smartphone of some sort, and um, it's it's very easy to access things almost immediately, and that's entertainment as well. I mean, people are playing, uh, you know, high-tech games on their phones as they're walking and waiting for the bus and such. So, I mean, there's no reason to take not take advantage of that kind of media, which I think is really, you know, really commendable. I, yeah, and the website, I must say, is very, very complete, and there's a lot of information on that, your blog spot. Um, I just think that that's a, that, that it's wonderful and it needs to be seen. Yeah, writing is becoming more and more important to my work. Um, and I actually really enjoy the act of, of writing and considering questions and trying to work through them through writing and it gives me a lot more insight on A, what I'm doing and B, what I can do next and, it, and working through ideas. Um, so I do a lot of writing on the blog. Mm -hmm. Is there something that, that you would like to like uh, say more about well you well, I just remembered you um, you were over in Ireland Ireland for a while how has that affected your work um, well it totally changed my work I was working two dimensionally up until that point and Ireland was what really uh, allowed me to jump off the deep end and to really explore um, how I could do my work in a totally different way and I don't think I can ever go back to thinking the way that I thought before Ireland. Um, so it made all of the things that I'm working on now possible. It, it gave me a lot of direction and really um, what the, the dean of the school there, uh, the Burren College of Art, told me was once I found my way of working, once I found something that would tie my work all together, I would know because I would never run out of ideas. And I feel like that, that has happened and I, I have a lot of, I just, I don't have enough time to go through all my ideas or to ever do everything. Um, I feel like it's constantly generating content for my work and, mm -hmm. and now that's where I want to be. Um, and I wouldn't have gotten there if it wasn't for the experience that I had working in Ireland. I really want to thank you. Thank you. For taking the time to talk here and give us a good idea of what you're doing. It's a, it's a very, um, very important to get this out into the open. Thanks. I appreciate it. Okay.
Okay, everybody, this is Sarah Francis, and uh, I'm Ron Shira, and um, thanks very much for joining us today.